Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to today's video on this Wednesday. Today is April 13th, and we are continuing our tournament today. As you know, there is not much left of this tournament after today's video. We only have Friday, and then we'll have our championship on Monday, and then we'll put up a little winner announcement video next Wednesday, and that'll be it. We'll be done with this tournament. I hope you have been enjoying, and I hope you enjoy today's. Um, with that being said, we're gonna jump right in. Uh, as you know, we're looking at the second generation disciples. These are men who came towards the end of the Bible and then uh, were the new leadership uh, going into that second generation. Um, so what I would like to do is start this video by announcing the results of Monday's video. And uh, uh, you perhaps uh, know that we now have it available to go online and look at the live results uh, and keep up with it and kind of follow it as the votes are coming in. Well, I'm very pleased to say, folks, that in Monday's video, um, if you've went online and looked, you will notice that there was a huge lead um, at first in that video, uh, which was Clement had a huge lead uh, over Germanicus, but folks, I am so uh, pleased to announce that that vote completely changed with some late votes that all came in, and it wound up being Germanicus with a victory, 55% to 45%. So folks, we now have our final four of our tournament is now set. We have today's video, Irenaeus and Polycarp. And then we have on Friday, Simeon and Germanicus. So it's very exciting. And we're gonna be starting here today with Irenaeus and Polycarp, okay? Um, so with that being said, um, I want to say one more thing and then we're going to start. I had said on Monday that I was going to, in this video, announce the theme of the next tournament. Well, uh, I hope you don't mind this, but I'm actually going to hold that back until next Wednesday's winner announcement video. In that video, we'll talk about the next tournament. Um, I just need a little bit of extra thoughts upon it before I announce it, okay? So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead now and jump into our video. As you can see here, uh, if you're familiar with our past tournaments, you'll know that when we get to the second round, no longer do we just tell their story. We've done that back in round one. Um, and... What we do in round two is uh, we answer some questions. We're gonna start with what was their position? Uh, basically, how did they serve God? And then second, we'll look at their personality. Third, we'll look at who do they compare to that is in the Bible. It'll give you a good idea of what kind of person this was by comparing them to a Bible character that we know very well, and then what verse in the scripture is a verse that kind of describes this person, okay? Now, I would like to begin with Irenaeus, and I want to remind you that he, he was born around the year 130 and died in the year 202, okay? And just so I won't forget this, I'm going to go ahead and write Polycarp was born in the year 69 and died in the year 155, okay? Now, folks, I want to take a moment here and talk about Irenaeus for just a moment, and then we'll answer these questions. Because, folks, I'm sure if you're watching this video, 
Uh, I know most people that are watching uh, watched our last tournament when we talked about the churches of the Bible. My point is, Polycarp, I'm sure, is someone you know a lot more than Irenaeus. I ask you as you listen to this video today to please um, really listen closely to Irenaeus because, folks, it is my personal opinion that these two men are almost just as equally inspirational. So please, just because you may know more of Polycarp, please don't let that be an immediate vote for him. Please give both men uh, your, your consideration, okay? But Irenaeus, we learned about in our first video of this tournament. The interesting thing is, folks, he was trained by Polycarp, okay? So you're seeing here kind of a picture like we see in the Bible between Paul and Timothy, his son in the faith. We see here Polycarp and his kind of a son in the faith, Irenaeus. This would be, uh, you could almost call Irenaeus Polycarp Jr., you know. And, uh, but we learned about him that he... Uh, he grew up in the town that Polycarp was the pastor in. He was trained by Polycarp. But when he got older, he went, and this is very big, folks, he left his town and he became a pastor in what you and I now know as France, the country of France. That's very interesting, folks, because, you know, in the Bible, you hear a lot of Israel and some of these other famous places, but France, uh, you know, that's very uh, familiar in our day today. That's where Irenaeus became the pastor at. He became a famous writer of Christian material, and, uh, and so he did a lot of great things. So first of all, what was his position? Well, we just talked about that. He became the pastor in France, okay? Now, <clears throat> I just want to explain to you folks why that's so important and why that's so special. Do you know, folks, that you and I here today in Louisiana, we live in a very French culture here in our state. France had a huge impact on the history of Louisiana. I'm just saying, folks, that Irenaeus was one of the first men to preach the gospel in France, okay? So, uh, so uh, that is amazing, okay? So, in other words, we can kind of thank Irenaeus for the gospel being in America, okay? Because America was born out of that France and England area. So I look at him as a hero of our faith. Now, second of all, folks, personality. What was his personality? Um, I just want to say, if you can hear something in the background, it is raining very hard outside right now. So if you hear something, that's probably thunder in the background. Um, but now, personality. Folks, if you're familiar with our previous tournaments, um, you'll know that we normally talk about the personality of the person, okay? Now, normally, it's kind of easy because normally we're, we're looking in the Bible at somebody that we know very well somebody like maybe the Apostle Peter, you know? When we look here at some of these men, we don't really have a lot of those stories, you know, from the Bible. A lot of these men, uh, they did a lot of big things after the time the Bible's written, okay? So we're looking at a lot of, you know, his history books for these men. Uh, some of them are there in the Bible too, though. But when I look at his personality, folks, 
I got to thinking about how he was the pastor in France. Now, please understand that where he grew up, folks, was way away from France, okay? Uh, this is in a time, folks, when, when uh, there wasn't cell phones to talk to your loved ones and things like that. You couldn't just jump on an airplane and go visit family. Folks, I see in Irenaeus a man that was willing, okay? A man that was willing to leave his home and go very far away. I mean, he took the gospel further than most had ever taken it. He was one of the first to ever go to France. Please understand, when he got to France, he would have to learn a new language there, a whole new culture. Guess what? He wouldn't be able to see Polycarp and those friends and church family that he once knew back at home in Smyrna. So folks, I see in Irenaeus willingness. Okay? I think that word describes him very well. Okay? You may could even use the word eager. You know, he was very eager to go. He was willing to go where the Lord was sending him. Okay. Um, so that is his personality. Now, I had fun with this question here, comparison. Because folks, you may be like me. You may not be as familiar with Irenaeus and Polycarp as people in the Bible. Well, I got to looking in the Bible, folks, saying, who is Irenaeus like that we know in the Scripture? And I got to thinking about two things, folks. Please listen carefully to this. Irenaeus, as I said a moment ago, was a writer, okay? And he wrote about a lot of things, but one thing he wrote about was he gave us a lot of information about the history of the church. You know, he fills in a lot of the gaps of information from when the Bible ended, you know, around the year 90 or 100, up to, you know, the time here of maybe around 200. He gives us a lot of information we wouldn't have known had he not have written it down. And I got to thinking about a man in the Bible that we know as Luke, okay? If you know your Bible, Luke wrote the book of Acts, okay? The fifth book of the New Testament. Luke wrote that book, and it was writing down the early history of the church, you see? And I see that in Irenaeus too. He's similar to Luke in that he wrote a lot of details about some of the history of the church. Okay, and even in Luke also was a willing person. If you know your Bible, Luke was willing to stay with the Apostle Paul to the very end. Paul famously said, only Luke is left with me. Luke was willing. So folks, in two different ways, I compare Irenaeus to the man in the Bible we know is Luke, okay? And folks, here we go. The last thing I want to say about Irenaeus, what verse in the Bible describes him? Now, please understand, when I say that, folks, I'm not saying his name appears in the Bible, okay? Please understand that Irenaeus came along, was born in the year 130. That would be after the time of the Bible. Okay? But there is a verse in the scripture that I think kind of describes who this man was. When I look at his personality of willingness, I think about a scripture in the Bible where it says, uh, the Lord said, uh, who will, who can I send? Who will go and work for me? Now, folks, I'm paraphrasing it. I, I can't remember the exact wording. But a man named Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord, send me. And boy, what a, what a verse. And that is in Isaiah 6, verse 8. 
Isaiah 6, verse 8. Okay? And folks, that verse says, Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord, send me. And that's what I see with Irenaeus and his willingness to go. He was willing to say, Lord, I'll go further than anybody else has gone. I'll go to France. I'll go all that way. So folks, do you see now, after we've looked at Irenaeus, do you see why I asked you in the start of the video to please consider him as well? Because, wow, he's super inspirational. So now, folks, let's turn our attention to Polycarp. Now, as I said a moment ago, I'm sure we all know Polycarp pretty well by now. If you've been a part of our tournaments, folks, uh, we talked about him even in our last tournament. He pastored the church, folks, that was the winner of our last tournament, the Church of Smyrna. Please remember that this man, which do you see right there, number one, he's the top rank of this tournament of how famous he is, okay? Now that doesn't mean he's the automatic winner, but he is definitely the most famous. That's why we ranked him number one. Um, please remember that this man was the disciple of the Apostle John. He, is, he was trained by the man, the Apostle John, okay? Think about it. John trained Polycarp, and Polycarp trained Irenaeus. You see the connection there? <clears throat> Polycarp was martyred for his faith, folks, in the year 155. He was killed for his preaching. Uh, when he died in the year 155, he was likely the only person alive in the year 155 who had a direct connection to one of the original apostles, and that being John. So this man was super famous, folks. Okay? So let's get started here. First of all, his position, we just said the answer to that. He was the pastor in Smyrna. Okay? Now, you may say, well, Brother Scott, I've never heard of the Church of Smyrna. Well, as I said a moment ago, folks, uh, that's the church that was the winner of our last tournament. You'll find them in Revelation chapter 2. They were the only church that got a good report from the Lord there in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Okay? So that's where he pastored, folks. Please understand. Smyrna, if you read that story in Revelation 2, they were a city that was highly persecuted there, the Christians. So folks, what a strong leader he must have been to lead that church in a very dark place. Okay? Now, what is his personality? Well, folks, I'm going to tell you this was a tough answer for me. Okay? And I know that may sound strange because we know Polycarp so well uh, from, from stories. I mean, but I really struggled to find one word that described him. I thought about several words. I thought about the word mature, but I didn't pick that word. Um, but folks, I settled on the word wise, okay? That was the word that I picked as his personality, wise. And I'll tell you why I picked that, okay? Wise meaning wisdom. Folks, please understand that Polycarp was to that second generation what somebody like Paul or Peter was to the first generation. He was so wise. Okay, for one thing, he was trained by one of the original apostles. I tell you what, you would, you would for sure get wisdom if you were trained by one of the original men, right? The Apostle John. Also, he was just wise in his leadership. Uh, we've already seen how he pastored one of the toughest 
a, a church in one of the toughest cities. He was very wise in his leadership and in his life and how he trained other men. I just want to say, folks, one thing I failed to mention. I am sure that Irenaeus probably one day towards the end of his life, he probably passed the torch on as well, so to speak. You know, he probably found a young man and trained that young man just like Polycarp had trained him, you see. But I believe Polycarp was very wise, and that's his personality. Now, folks, comparison. Who in the Bible does he compare the closest to? Well, I'm just going to be honest with you, folks. I picked the easy answer. I picked the obvious answer. I picked the Apostle John. Okay. So I'm going to write that down. I picked the obvious answer of all. Folks, I, there was no way that I could look in the New Testament or anywhere in the Bible and find somebody and compare Polycarp to that person more than John. That's the man that trained him. I believe Polycarp just soaked in everything John told him to the point, folks, that later in Polycarp's life, he now was that leader pretty much of Christianity, not just in his city, but, you know, of all Christianity. I believe John passed that torch to somebody like Polycarp, okay? I think he just compares just uh, very similar, okay? And then, not to repeat myself, John passed the torch so to speak, to Polycarp. Polycarp passed it to Irenaeus, okay? So there's a direct connection here with all three of these men, you know? And then the last thing, folks, what verse in the scripture describes Polycarp the best? Well, this was a tough one as well. What verse could I pick? Well, I just simply, folks, got to thinking about the leadership of Polycarp how he was the leader in that church and how he was the leader of men like Irenaeus and men like even over here, Germanicus. That's another one of his young disciples he trained. I got to just thinking about that leadership and that wisdom of Polycarp and uh, a verse came to my mind that talks about feed the flock of God. It's referring to pastors um, preaching and feeding the flock of God and taking care of the people. And I think that describes Polycarp very well. And that scripture is 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. And it talks about feed the flock of God. Okay? So... Folks, that's where I'm going to end today's video. Uh, I've done the best that I can. I don't know about you, but wow. When I look at these two men, I think super inspirational, both of them. Uh, I ask you to please pick the one that you feel inspired the most by. If that's Irenaeus and his willingness to go wherever, the Lord sent him, pastor in France, like the verse said, here am I, Lord, send me. Or is it Polycarp and that wisdom and that leadership, that training of people and feeding the flock of God? So folks, which person inspires you more? Please keep in mind, the winner of this video will be in the championship on Monday and has a chance of winning the tournament. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please remember, you can go online and see the results as they come in, the voting of these videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please tune back in on Friday as we have our last semifinal before the championship. We'll look at Simeon and Germanicus. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. We'll see you next time. Until then, have a great day. Take care. God bless you.